This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at Kettering.edu slash first so as tyler said um these first couple ones are the topics that we originally going to be working with um but um you know like i said let's go ahead and hop into those frc headlines um these are going to be a, a quicker ones as we want to get to um the super important information um that we deem but we feel the community definitely should be aware of so starting off here um, i know connor, connor also has something to comment on this but uh, released on november 3rd uh, it was announced that there's going to be an increase of woody flowers finalist awards the district championships um, I know for the folks that are in FIM and, um, you know, obviously me, I've been a big proponent of this, um, you know, only having one Woody, one Woody Flowers finalist award for the amount of teams that, you know, specifically is um, not only in first in Michigan, but, you know, the surrounding districts, first mid-Atlantic, New England, Ontario, um, it's just not an accurate representation. Um, and, you know, we should be awarding um, more people for their uh, values based on that. So, you know, I'm happy to see an increase across the board. Um, to be able to directly recognize more of great, these great mentors that are in our program. Um, just, you know, numbers wise, Michigan moves from one to three, Chesapeake, Fit, um, First Mid-Atlantic, New England, Ontario, and Pacific Northwest all go from one to two um, with the remaining district championship staying at one. So I know Connor, you wanted to comment on this and we've been, you know, we've talked offline, but have both been a pretty big proponent of this. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, I love that they're moving in a forward direction to adding more WFFA winners uh per district because i mean the ratio is kind of alarming a little yeah. bit so if you, yeah if you look in the chief delphi blog post um for this they're like more than half of the teams in frc are in a district system but when it came time to the uh, wffa winners for the 2022 season uh 50 of those were from a regional and 11 of those were from a district so the you know, 11 WFFA is from a district compared to regionals. Like your, your concentration is, or like your, your, uh, do I want to say equality? I don't know if that's the right word, but from between a district to a regional, it's like, it's not spread out very, very fairly. So this does help a little bit. I do think that it could be a little bit more. So for like, for example, for like Michigan, you guys have over 500 teams and then you have three representatives. I still think that's a little low. Maybe could go up to like five or maybe six. Like it is a prestigious award, and you know at events, uh, the speaker who is typically a past uh, Woody Flowers finalist or even a Woody Flowers championship winner was always going to say like, "Hey, students, like you should nominate your mentors so that they can have the recognition," which is absolutely true. However, when it comes time to physical award, I don't believe that there are that there's enough recognition, at least within the district. Um, a little bit further down in this Chief Delphi thread, uh, Glenn Lee does note that the ratio to teams in a district versus the teams that actually submit is pretty, pretty big. So let's say, for example, like Michigan, there's only there's 500 teams, but only like. 175 are actually submitting so when when glenn lee actually said that 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 started to make a lot more sense as to why they chose x amount of uh woody flowers finalist awards per district um i still think it could be a little bit more but it's progress in the right direction and i'm all for it a uh, little bit of a disclaimer for that, though. I have been nominated in prior years, but that has absolutely nothing to do with my stance on the topic. Yeah, awesome. All right. Thanks, Connor, for that. Uh, jumping into the next headline that we have, um, you know, an important blog post, again, that also was released, uh, I believe, just under a week now, um, related to the um, rules preview and the vision target update. So some very large uh, rule changes here regarding the robot rules. Um, you know, a couple of these I'm in big favor of, especially, uh, I believe it is um, R302-E, where um, items created before kickoff, they're, if they're functionally equivalent to a COTS item, 
um, that teams are permitted to use them. I think that's a big one and a big step in the correct direction. Um, but the main thing that I really wanted to highlight here is that um, if you go towards the bottom of the blog post, um, you know, it, it was announced and we had talked about this on a previous show um, with uh, Juan and uh, it was the April tag release. And it was important to note that, you know, they had released the specific family of tags that they were using being tag 36 H 11 um, and first actually announced that they're going to be moving to the tag 16 H five family um, for this specific coming season. Um, and then that there's not going to be any tags um, from any other family on the field. And they're approximately going to be an eight in a square um, instead of eight and an eight. So important that they're able to get that information out. So if you have been working on the April tag family situation um, moving for this season, please know that the family of tags did change. And we'll be going to Tyler for our next one. Yeah, I mean, like we said, uh, we wrote these uh, before a lot of this came up on here, but wanted to, wanted to at least wrap up with something maybe a little more on the uh, lighter side before we start to uh, uh, dive in a bit more. And that was, uh, there has been a winner of the uh, worst song played at FRC events bracket challenge uh, that has been out there. So uh, congratulations to uh, Baby Shark for taking the worst song uh, played on here. Uh, Connor, would you agree with this? Uh, Baby Shark is the worst song to have played in an FRC event? Yeah, it's definitely up there. Um, I think they use that for torture at times, but yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I agree with that. It's not great. <laughs> uh, so my only thing is uh, I would go Jeopardy theme after the first time it's played. It's absolutely terrible. I, any any DJ yeah, plays it, absolutely hate it. So, uh, mm. But fair enough. Like I said, a lot of these were <laughs> before we got into this. We wanted to kind of wrap up <laughs> with a little bit of laughs, a little bit of fun before uh, – before we get into our, our next uh, segments coming up here. For sure. So uh, go ahead and jump into topic two. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the recent CTRE blog post um, regarding the release of Phoenix X and uh, the new API called Phoenix Pro. Um, so if you're not familiar and haven't got a chance to see this, I know most of the community has, but um, Phoenix X is essentially an upgraded um, GUI interface that is similar to Phoenix Tuner V1. Um, it's going to allow for software downloads via the approved app stores and a bunch of improvements from Tuner V1. Um, important to know that Tuner V1 is still going to be supported, but Phoenix X is what they're going to be moving to um, in the next coming couple seasons. But um, from the look of it and what they, they've been able to share, Phoenix um, Phoenix X looks really cool. I'm, I really like the GUI that's there. Um, so I, I'm super excited about that and getting to use that. Um, but, you know, the, the important one that's caught the community's eyes a lot is um, the release of Phoenix Pro. And Phoenix Pro, um, essentially in a nutshell, is a new API that has various language features um, that include conical units such as volts, amps, um, and ETC. So moving away from talent units, um, understanding, you know, a little bit easier uh, with real world units. Um, FOC for Falcons, uh, which is an average 15% uh, increase in peak power, um, is also on this. And also, if you're familiar with uh, Kalman algorithms, uh, Phoenix Pro is going to be using Kalman algorithms for velocity smoothing as well. So some pretty cool um, features in here in Phoenix Pro. Um, but CCRR also did release that um, in order to have access to that Phoenix Pro API, there is going to be a paywall um, so that there will be licensing. Um, CCRE is not released on if it's going to be per device, per team, um, but they did note that there are going to be multiple options for teams to suit their best needs. So... Um, you know, in my opinion, um, I overall fully support Phoenix Pro being behind the paywall. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's relative okay to ask teams um, to pay for software. Um, the only part that I am disappointed about um, is that, you know, field oriented control for the Falcon is behind the paywall. Um, in my opinion, I think that that should be out of the paywall. But um, outside of that, I think, you know, paying for the software is um, completely okay, in my opinion. So, um you know, Connor, I know that we've also talked about this, Tyler, as well. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and comment on this for a little more. Was this software originally supposed to be free? I, I'm not I'm not a Falcon 500 user and I yeah. never have been. It was supposed uh, to be free. No, there was I if I'm if I'm recalling correctly, there was no information saying that it was going to be free. Um, it just said that it was going to be available then I'm fine with it. If, if they originally said it was going to be free and then changed it, I'd, I'd be a lot, I'd have a lot more problems. Um, I think it's a cool software. Um, I don't know. It's just not for me, but I'm sure other people will find it pretty well. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot, you know, if you look at the cheap Delphi thread, 
Uh, obviously, there's uh, a, a lot of uh, disparity, I think, between where people are kind of going on something like this. I, to me, the question is, uh, how does this potentially impact future the future for things, right? Not just for CTRE, but for any of the suppliers uh, that we're looking at. It, it, you know, if this, it, it's kind of like one of those things where if this happens and it works, are we going to start seeing more and more of this? And I think about the automotive industry right now, where this is exactly the type of things that, well, not exactly, but this is essentially what they're looking at doing, right? There are no cars where if you want to turn on your heated seats, you pay a $5 monthly fee or something yep. like that for it. So is this something that, uh, you know, we might start to see more suppliers say, hey, you know what? That worked for them. And you know what? That makes a lot of money. Is that something that we can do? Um, and now that becomes, you know, almost a different way to, that we see teams starting to siphon off money uh, is because we're paying software licensing fees for things. And I understand the counterpoint of it as well, too. To me, I, I, I'm curious to see how the community reacts. And I bet you that the suppliers are very curious to see how the community reacts uh, to paying something like this into the future. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And, you know, like I said, um, you know, working in industry, a lot of times, um, a lot of this software, you know, almost any software actually in industry, you know, requires a license. So, um, you know, up to this point, I think the, you know, suppliers of FRC have done, you know, a very generous job of, you know, making sure that there's a baseline, at least for teams to um, access. But I personally do not have a problem for um, there being a paywall for, um, you know, a further API based on that. So Re real quick, I'm very curious to see how many teams will use it, given where our topics are about to go in the show. So. Yeah, and I guess that'll, I, that'll be interesting. I, I do want to preface this, and I, I was going to mention this when we get to the Vex IFI conversation. But um, you know, obviously, with the recent announcement, um, you know, with the situation that's been going on at IFI and um, Vex, that there are products that CTR has that are separated from Vex Pro. So I know that Kremrid put on Chief Delphi um, from a Discord post that um, Jacob from CTR put in there on products that are not directly influenced um, or not directly related with VEX. So for example, like the CTRE PDP, um, the CTRE PCM, um, the Canivore, the uh, can coder, stuff like that. Those are CTRE products. So if you can, please do your best to try and support CTRE um, direct, you know, directly with those um, products, because, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, although I think what's going on, um, you know, with the FRC community is correct, that this is actually going to end up hurting CTRE more than it is um, VEX Pro. So it's important that we, you know, do our part too as well to buy those CTRE products that um, are separated from VEX. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And chat, uh, this is definitely something, you know, uh, I'd love to see some discussion on, on where you think the, the future is going to be for something like this. And, uh, you know, you know, are there other things that we might see uh, that you would either be willing to pay for or do that? I, I know the general consumer perspective of it for things is people just want to pay a one-time cost, right? Like the whole thing. But the reality of things are, it, not necessarily in robotics parts, but in other things, is that you can offer things at a lower cost over a longer period of time. And which from a consumer absorption level, consumers tend to actually take on much more, which is why you see, you know, Right. All these companies that do stuff for free are very low cost for these reasons. It's not because, you know, of a certain thing. You know why? It's because it makes them more money. That's why they do it. Um, and the consumers are willing to absorb it at the same time. So it's not necessarily pissing off at that many consumers or not enough for them to to lose as much money uh, for something like that. You know, everything is going to be, you know, that, that give or take of, you know, why companies do something a certain way. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.